Uh, first of all, just like to everyone, uh, like to thank everyone for coming. Um, and you know, I just want to announce at the end of this season, I'll be retiring. Uh, I want to thank the St Kilda Football Club for everything that they've done for me over the last 16 years. They've been a massive part of my life. Uh, I feel very fortunate to be able to play, you know, a sport that I love and do it professionally for such a long time. Um, but there comes a point in time when, in every player's career that um, you have to move on and, and that time's come for me. Um, look, it's been my decision. The club have been really supportive uh, with me and, um, but when I weigh everything up, I feel like it's the right time. Um, you know, publicly I just want to thank the, the supporters and members for the way that they've got behind me my whole career. I've had fantastic support. Um, to my teammates, um, past and present, um, you know, for just making my time as a player and as a teammate and as a friend so enjoyable. I'm uh, you know, really going to miss the banter and, and everything that goes with being an AFL player. Um, and lastly, just to my family, uh, to my mum and dad, uh, my brother and two sisters, and of course uh, my beautiful wife Tara and, and little son Hunter, I just want to thank them for all their support. Um, certainly wouldn't be here today if it, if it wasn't for their love and their support um, throughout my whole career. That's all I really had to say, so I'm happy to open it up for questions. How tough was it when you to get in front of the plane and tell them to um, I think I probably, I think I cried more when Harv's retired than I, than I did telling the boys that I was finishing up. <laughs> um, I think that was probably just a sign that I was really comfortable with the decision. I knew going in this year that, you know, I was 34, I'd had some pretty significant injuries over the last couple of years and I felt like I'd, I'd given it everything that I had and and it's probably allowed me to play to a level that I've been happy with this year but I I think that you know me as a person as a player I've always liked to set the example both on the training track and on the field and I just feel that um, I'm probably on the edge of the cliff in terms of my body and, and things like that and I just just feel that the time's right um, to finish up at the end of the year so in terms of the decision I think as a player it's always really hard to say those words you, you sort of feel like you're not copping out, but you know it's hard to say. But I think I feel really comfortable with it. Um, I think the time's right. I think you know with where the playing list is at, there's a number of really young guys who are uh, who play in a similar position to me, and I think they're really ready to take the next step in their footy development. So in terms of that aspect as well, I don't feel like I'm leaving a massive void or anything like that. I think. Um, you know, there's guys like you know David Armitage, Jack Stephen. They're a little bit older, but guys like Seb Ross and and Luke Dunstan and Mav Weller and these sort of guys are ready to take that next step. So, I think when I weighed it all up, there's probably five or six reasons that pointed towards you know the time being right. If you play every game, uh, you'll finish on 297. Is it a regret that you won't make 300? No, not at all. Look, I think with any of those sort of personal milestones, if they come along, they're great. But. It's not the reason why I played football and I think most players would feel the same way that, look, if they come along, they're nice. Um, but I'm also really comfortable that I feel like I've given absolutely everything that I possibly could. And um, to get a little bit short, I think probably my mum's probably a bit more disappointed than anyone, but it's just one of those things that, yeah, unfortunately it didn't happen. But I also feel very fortunate that I've been able to play for as long as I have and I've, I've had some pretty serious injuries and I feel like the club's always really supported me through those, you know, at times where, you know, I did my knee when I was over 30 and obviously had the open heart surgery as well, but the club never mentioned retiring to me or, or finishing up. They always backed me in and I feel, you know, really thankful for that. You've got a lot of career highlights, Lee. What's your favourite memory of the first year of the play? Oh, it's really hard. You know, I think playing in some really big games and um, to me the best feeling in football is, you know, when you run down the race and you can look next to the guy beside you, in front of you, behind you, and you, you know what you're going to get from them. And, and for a long period of time, I'm, I'm really proud of what we stood for as a fo football team, as a football club. And that's something that we talk to the young guys a lot about, is, is that feeling and that level of trust. And you know, to play in some big games in front of big crowds and get the job done, there's, there's no better feeling in football. Now, unfortunately, we didn't uh, get the ultimate prize, but you know, I, I feel comfortable in knowing that we gave it absolutely everything we had and, and on the day, you know, we just weren't quite good enough, but I'm really proud of what we stood for. Alan, you've restricted a lot of clubs. Is there a common theme in, you know, how all the different clubs, what they think of Lenny, have you encountered a player who seems to be so universally respected? Uh, y yes and no would be the way I'd, I'd answer that. He's, um, 
Uh, he's admired throughout the industry. It, um, I spoke really briefly after Lenny did today and, and mentioned exactly that, that um, you know, my, my take on Lenny was incredible competitor, fantastic person. Um, and then to have the the, uh, the privilege to be able to work with him, albeit for a short period, is, is, is just been an honour. He's um, he's an outstanding fella. The work that he's done with our young guys, the the conversations that he has, the work the work that he does on the, on the training track, and, and and prepares our young blokes for life after Lenny is, has been incredibly significant. So he's he's been enormous. Lenny, that wobbling kick in 2010, I said a little bit before. Obviously, five pounds, Melanie's weight. You still think about? It. No, I don't. To be honest, I. Um, look, when it happened, it, it, you know, it would have been nice if it was a different result. But like I said before, I'd, I don't have any regrets, and I don't think as a team we should either because we were right there. It just didn't come off. And sometimes in football and in life, it doesn't go your way. But I think it's how you respond from that and, and how you react. And you know, I don't, I don't live in the past. Um, I don't think this football club does either. Um, you know, players move on, people move on, and that's just the way it is. But um, I think, you know, that feeling of being there and, and being right up there and amongst it, um, that's a feeling that I'll never forget. You know, the feeling of running out on grand final day is something that'll stick with me forever. What about the Norm Smith 81 that uh, drawn and grainy? I mean, you probably didn't um, appreciate it as much then as you do now. Is that fair to say? Um, oh, yeah, look, I, I, think, um, I think at the end of that game, I think everyone was in, probably in a bit of a state of shock, but... Um, well, it's not something that, you know, it probably would have meant a lot more if we'd won. Um, you know, whilst it's, I think as a player, it's, it's nice to be able to stand up on the big stage. Yeah, it's not something that, you know, I would have been a lot more happy if, we'd, if I'd got a different sort of medallion that day. So, you know, as I said before, if those things come along, they're nice, but it's not what you play footy for. When you're one of the most loved uh, universally amongst all the players and fans, how does that sit with you? Uh, yeah, it's not something that sits all that comfortably with me. I'd, I, um, yeah, I'd, I asked the club if this could be fairly low key, and <laughs> it didn't really turn out that way, did it? Um, but yeah, I guess over my career, I've just, you know, tried to treat people the way I'd like to be treated, and that's, you know, respectfully. And if, if you know, people sort of warm to me um, through that, then then that's nice. But um, yeah, I guess as a player, I've always just wanted to be respected. You know, by my teammates and, and by the club, and and um, I feel like you know I've got that. Yeah. What's, what's the next phase?